Modification of the Mosaic Law The Mosaic Law is modified and a new set of Ten Commandments are made after Moses comes down with the first set of Ten Commandments and is shocked upon seeing his people drinking, eating, and playing around a golden calf. This golden calf was likely a depiction of the Egyptian god Apis, which the Egyptians portrayed as a bull calf. The depiction of an animal known for its sexual virility and power power in gold, explains Petrie, is indicative of the people's excessive love of money for money, power, and pleasure. The threefold temptation the Israelites fell into of being overly possessive, overly desirous for sensual pleasure, and out of pride, wanting to be powerful, were these exact same temptations that Adam and Eve gave into and that Jesus resisted in his 40 days and nights in the Judean desert. Only Jesus emerged from these temptations unscathed. Moses responds to the Israelites falling into adulterous idolatry by breaking the Ten Commandments apart, grinding the golden calf into powder, mixing the golden powder with water, and then commanding the Israelites to drink this concoction. Exodus 32.20 He then goes back up Mount Sinai, pleads that God will be merciful, and is given a new set of Ten Commandments along with a longer list of additional commandments. These additional laws are listed in Deuteronomy, which in Greek literally means second law, and in Leviticus as well they are listed. In addition, the priesthood that had been shared by all the tribes was restricted to the tribe of Levi, the tribe that Moses, Aaron, and Miriam belonged to. Moses' tribe was the only tribe of the twelve that rallied around Moses when Moses, in anger at the idolatry around the golden calf, asked the Israelites, Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. Exodus 32.26 The Levites then gathered around Moses, who commands them to punish the Israelites. They do so by killing 3,000 men. Upon demonstrating that their loyalty to God surpasses their loyalty to their own people, Moses then asserts the Levites have ordained themselves as priests. With these words, Moses inaugurates a new priesthood, the Levitical priesthood. According to the letter to the Hebrews, Jesus, as a non-Levite, as a member of the tribe of Judah, returns to the original priesthood that was not restricted to one tribe. The priesthood of Jesus is according to the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7.11. Melchizedek, as explained earlier, had blessed Abraham, was believed to be Shem, Noah's oldest son. In acknowledgement of the Levites replacing the priesthood of the firstborn sons, Exodus commands that all the firstborn sons are to be redeemed, Exodus 34.20. The act of freeing themselves from the role of the priests consists of paying five coins, shekels, to a Levitical priest, specifically to a male descendant of Aaron, Numbers 3, 47 through 48. This practice of redeeming the firstborn sons is still practiced by Jewish people today and is called in Hebrew, Pidyon Haben. During Jesus' time, the Jewish people also redeemed their firstborn sons by paying five coins to a Levitical priest. Following Jewish law, Mary fulfilled the law, this law, when she presented Jesus in the temple. Luke 2.23. 2-23. Before leaving Mount Sinai, God commands Moses to take Israel's first census, which entails determining which men are able to go forth in war. Numbers 1-3. Hamilton points out that this phrase is used 15 times in this chapter. He comments, I quote, The presence of God over among at the head of his people as they march on does not render the need for a prepared army superfluous. God works not outside of his people, but through his people, to see them realize his destination for them.